Hi, hello, Steven. Tell me, how's the photo composition going? The Photoshop, the Photoshop composition? Listen, let me tell you, perspective, okay? I got 100 photos, I'm trying to edit into one perspective. I don't know if I'm happy here. Okay, uh, so 100 things, masks. Okay, you ever tried to, you ever tried to cut out a cat with a pen tool? Nine cats? Listen, I'll show you right here. 45% uh, of the time, I I'm crying. I think I may be unhappy right now. The client said he wanted delicious. What does that even mean? Oh, look right here, right here. 45% crying, 55% almost crying. Uh, hi, hi, Julian. How is the photo composition um, going? Uh, Photoshop. Generate my creative genius. Ooh. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to be working with the mesh warp tool. Now the mesh warp tool allows you to take an image and kind of pull it around to make it look like it fits when it may no normally not do that. Now there's a couple ways to do it. There's the wrong way and there's the right way. Now what I mean by wrong way is the destructive way where you start working on it, you make a change, and then when you come to go back to edit it, it doesn't let you do that. So I'm gonna show you how to do that first so you don't do it that way, and then we're gonna do it the right way. So. I got this magazine here, this little book that's open. You can see I got some staples and a crease in here and I want to make this look as real as possible with what I put on here. So I got two images here. I got this one and this one and I'm gonna work on the first image over here first. Now, I want this to look like this page is sitting in this book. Now, what I'm gonna do is just try to pull this out as best I can for the moment to make it fit on here. Now, you can see it's a little short uh, lengthwise from top to bottom, but that's okay. So now that I have this selected, what I can do is I can go over to my tools here and I can grab the mesh warp tool. Now when I do that, I'm gonna get a little message up here that says, <clears throat> the assistant rasterized the layer. Don't worry about that right now. But basically it's telling me you're making a change and once it's done, it's done. So with the mesh warp tool, you get these little nodes in the top corners, top and bottom corners, and I can pull this around to try to, try to make it fit on the page. So just say I did this, pulled it down here, and I said, okay, that looks okay. And I can either hit apply in the top left corner or I can hit enter. Now that I hit enter, this change is now done. I can't go back and, and edit this. So if I zoomed in and said, oh, it doesn't look right up here. I need to fix this. I can't actually go back and edit it by doing it that way. So don't do it that way. So we're gonna go out. And what we're gonna do is we're going to select our page. So we got our page. This time we're gonna do it the non-destructive way by going up to layer, new live filter layer, distort, and mesh warp. Now you'll see when I click on that now, if I go over to my layers panel, I've got the page, but underneath it as a live filter layer, we have mesh warp. Now what this means is basically I can make a change, save it, commit to that change, go back, do something else. I can always come back to this, double click on it, and it will let me change it. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna pull this page up like this, like this, just say, and I'm gonna hit enter. Now, uh, because I've done that using a live layer, I can just click on it again, and my nodes come back. So let's edit this a bit. So I'm gonna zoom in here. And what we're gonna do is try to line this up as best we can, right? So let's pull it to here. Let's pull it up to here. Let's go into the middle crease. Now, these things have these little, I don't know what they're called, node arms. Uh, in curves, they're called something else. Uh, I don't remember what they're called now. Something weird, something weird, I don't know. Um, but these little nodes allow you to adjust it a little bit further. So I'm just gonna, by eye, pull that up over here, check this one. That one looks pretty good from, to me for now. So we'll leave that one. Now we're gonna go back down here, grab the node here, pull this to the corner to about there. I'm gonna go over to this node, pull this down to about there. And it looks okay, but you can see we have this gap down here. So again, I'm gonna grab these nodes, these little arms here, pull that down. I'm gonna go over to this one and I'm gonna pull this one down a little bit too, maybe like that. So let's back out. And hit enter and don't worry, we're gonna make this look better than it does, but it looks like it's on there pretty decent at the moment. So we'll leave that one. I'm gonna go and turn the second page on. And same thing, I'm gonna grab the image, I'm gonna to try to pull it out as best I can to make it fit, maybe something like that. And again, it's too short, but that's okay. We are gonna grab the mesh warp tool. And again, we're gonna do it the non-destructive way. So I've got my page selected. I'm gonna go up to layer, new live filter layer, and then I'm gonna pick distort and mesh warp. Okay, now that I've got that selected, uh, you can see the mesh warp has appeared in my layers panel underneath the page. So that's great. I'm gonna grab my node, I'm gonna pull this up. Go over here, pull this one up. 
and I gotta fix this gap here. So I'm gonna use both of these arms here to pull it up over there. I'm gonna pull this one up this way. Make sure, yeah, that looks decent. Let's go down to the bottom. Pull this node down to about there. Pull this node down to about there. And again, we're gonna use these arms to adjust it. Let's try that and let's try try that for now okay so now they're both on there I'm commit to that change by hitting enter and it looks okay but it still looks kind of fake because you can't really see through the material of the actual magazine so if i zoom in here it may have the shape but it doesn't take on the texture or um, the look of the book so with the first image selected i'm going to go over to my blend modes and your blend modes here are at the top of the layers panel and right now it's set to normal and for most cases this will work uh, for whatever mock-up you're doing but i'm going to pick multiply so I pick multiply for that one. I'm gonna go back to my second picture. And again, back to my blend modes, and I'm gonna change it from normal to multiply. And now you can see if I zoom in, you can see the material of the paper and you can see the staples with the shadows coming through it. So it makes it look a little bit more real when you change it. Color burn works as well sometimes, not so bad. Um, and this mock-up I could adjust over here. You can see a little bit by the uh, monkey here that this could be your chimpanzee could be adjusted and over here maybe a little bit but I again I can always click on this my nodes come back and I can start to pull this out and adjust that as well so that is just a quick thing on um, live filter layers anything you do up here layer new live filter layer whether they're blur sharpens distorts noises noises um, they're all live filters so this is the way to use the live filters or filters in general because you can always go back and edit them it's non-destructive so i hope this video was helpful if it was you already know what to do you gotta tap 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 that like button and if you've never seen my videos before and you thought wow this is awesome um you should join us subscribe we have a pool party every year uh and this year it's uh, it's gonna be at your house so if you don't have a pool um you still got time and snacks are also on you, so you can bring those too. Uh, so anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.